here. And let's grab a field. And uh, let's go ahead and make a few of these here. We could make a bunch, but we'll just make three. Make them a little bit longer. And uh, we'll take this one and connect it to the customer info database. And what do we want to put on here? Well, why don't we put phone number, customer's phone number in case we want to call them. And we'll take this one and connect it to the database. And maybe on this one we'll put uh, feedback, put the ID number. Why don't we put the disk size? And on this one, why don't we go ahead and uh, put the memory size? How about that? All righty. So now we've got these three here. And we'll go ahead and move those down, maybe down here, and make our window a little bit wider. Even after these are hooked up, I can relay them out. I can add new controls, do whatever I want. And now I'll go ahead and get a rich text field and bring it over here. We'll make this one big. Because this is going to be used maybe in a customer service application. And I'm going to take this and hook it to the customer info database. And in feedback, I noticed a comments field down here. So let's hook that up. And now let's go back and test our interface. Let's go get the data. It's opening the connection with the Sybase database, pulling out the data we want. Here we go. Price is outstanding. There's Mr. Bennett's phone number. There's Mr. Greeley. He's got a 105 megabyte disk drive with 8 megabytes of memory. Phone number, phone numbers, and messages. Now, this database object has come about because we've been working with Fortune 500 companies for the last two years as they have done their development work building custom applications on Next Step. And they have been able to build them in a remarkably short amount of time. What they're telling us is that most of those are database based. So could we help them out and extend our object-oriented technology even further to not only help them build their applications faster, but let them choose whatever back-end database they want without rewriting their application. And that is our goal for our database object, which we are collaborating on with our customers. We've seen building custom applications with Next Step. And we think in those first three categories, we absolutely have achieved best of breed. But we also believe that there's a fourth area. What we're hearing from everyone is that the competitive advantage of the 90s is going to be squeezed not out of more individual productivity, but out of improving the productivity of teams and groups of people working together. That's where it's going to come from. And so we think that the most exciting thing of the early 90s is going to be to link these islands of personal computers together into interpersonal computing which has as its mission to improve group productivity and collaboration. Interpersonal computing has three fundamental parts, communication, collaboration, and content. We're going to explore all of those. The content is primarily the productivity apps from the personal computing marketplace, and we saw those. So if we're going to improve group productivity and collaboration, we have to start with the communication, and the best communication medium that we've ever seen is a multimedia email system. And again, it can't just be text. We've got to integrate the voice into it. We've got to integrate images into it. And we have to integrate, eventually, video into it. Now, in addition to PostScript and Scandian images and sounds, if I have just finished a spreadsheet and I want to send my spreadsheet to the entire marketing department or to the entire senior team of the company, I bring up a mail message, type in a few words to address it, and I drag that document right into the mail window. And I can put it anywhere I want. Here I've put it between some text. And the recipient simply double clicks on this. The spreadsheet launches, and the data is apparent in a matter of a few seconds through the mail system, spread out to as many people as you like. So this is Ashton Tate's PowerStep program. And here's a graph from PowerStep. And I see some lips in here, and I can't help but click them. Steve, this recent data from the National Research Council is really alarming. The spreadsheet graphically illustrates how fewer PhDs are planning on careers in higher ed. 
click on the graph, grab a corner, and spin it to get a much better sense of the problem. Okay. In power step, I can simply grab the graph and move it. So we can have postscript text, we can have scanned in images, we can have voice, we can have music, and we can have any document created by any application that exists today or tomorrow on the next system. Built in to release 2.0 of Next Step is fax capability. Let me show you what I mean. I go to print, and up pops my print panel. The new print panel for 2.0 lets you select printers very easily. But I'm not going to say print because we've added a new button down here called fax. And I'm going to pick fax, and up pops the fax panel. And here are all the people whose addresses I have and phone numbers. And I can enter new ones very easily, modify the ones that exist. And they want me to fax this to somebody, so I would just pick Adobe, and I would say fax. We've saved ourselves a few thousand dollars sending fax machine. We've saved ourselves having to print something out and go find a fax machine and send it. And we get a far superior result on the other end. All the software is built into 2.0. You need an approximately $500 fax modem to make this work, but you can put one on the network and share it with groups of 50 or 100 people if you want to. So, the likes of this stuff has really never been seen on machines before. And this gives you a brief sampling of what we mean by interpersonal computing. So let's examine color. We wanted the best quality color. So how do we find it? Well, first we have to say, what is quality? How do we define quality? We define it in two ways. One is by the number of colors. Most companies ship systems with 8-bit color, which gives you only 256 colors on the screen. While that is enough to do pink borders around your windows and purple menus, it is not enough... <laughs> it is not enough to put a photograph on the screen, which is what we believe the true market opportunity is. First thing I want to show you is the quality of the color. This is a GE projection system. It is nowhere near as vivid as the real monitor. Here we have an image of a beach uh, and a mountain in the background. And one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to bring up a Ferrari here. Now, this is how every other computer, if it could, would bring up the Ferrari. And I'm sure it wouldn't be able to move it around much. But let's say it could. That's not so exciting. I'm going to go use a feature that's built into every next system and eliminate the black background and show the transparency. And if you look carefully, you'll see that you can even see the mountain through the windshield. <laughs> These are full 32-bit color images that we're looking at. And we have added an Intel i860 on a board we call Next Dimension inside our cube. So this is what our Next Dimension board looks like. Let me go through the features briefly. A million pixels, all 32 bits with alpha channel. That's that transparency that lets us see through the windows. An Intel i860 graphics accelerator. And every system comes with 8 megabytes of RAM, expandable to 32, I believe. Full color postscript on every system. Everything you've seen today has been drawn by color postscript. Full NTSC and PAL video in and out, and full JPEG hardware compression at $39.95. Now, in order to get a system, we need a next dimension card. And we're going to be selling the Sony 16-inch Trinitron display for $29.95. And you need a cube. And you can buy a cube without the black and white display. And that's what a next dimension system costs. But we also wanted a low-cost color alternative. And it turned out beautiful. 